Hello, chat. It's me, Star Shard. You guys remember me, right? I'm not irrelevant yet. It's Wednesday. It's February 1st. It's 2023. It's the first stream of the new month, which means we're going to be looking at some very, very... Um, I don't want to say funny. Maybe some of them will be funny. But uh, we're going to be looking at Am I the asshole? I also have a couple of other subreddits open here, so we're not just bald. Oh, God. Where'd my hair go? Who stole my hair? Oh, no. How did this happen? Hey, Sertari. How's it going? So we are looking at Am I the asshole? We got it. And then a couple of other subreddits opened up here. And I think we're just going to jump right into it. No time to wait. Hey, Hover Squid. Hello, Hover Squid. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the Am I the Asshole recap for January. We're going to be taking a look at some very, very not necessarily funny posts. I'm just going to want to know how I'm doing. I'm, um, I'm doing all right, I guess. I had to work today. It's the first day of the month. I had to do, I had to actually do stuff, which... You guys know how that is, right? Like, sometimes you go to work and you don't have to do anything. And then other times, you got to do a lot of stuff. Well, today was one of those you got to do a lot of stuff days. Uh, I argued with my coworker about... What, what did we argue about this time? I think I was just bitching about how I hate when celebrities try to make us feel bad. Because, you know, they're... They, they want sympathy for being famous. Hover Squid says, I worked from home today. My state is scared at the suggestion of ice. I live in Minnesota, so um, I basically ice skate to work at this point. There are some very, very disgusting places on the sidewalks where I have to walk. It is. I am taking my life into my own hands every day that I go in. So let's uh, let's start. Let's get a little appetizer going here. We have, of course, the quintessential wedding. Am I the asshole post? Am I the asshole for kicking out one of my bridesmaids for showing up in the wrong dress? Uh, yeah, no, no, you're not. No, someone suggested ice and we went into lockdown. Holy cow. What did you do? You live in like the Sahara Desert. I know there's no states in Africa, but. You know, I guess it would have to be one of the more southerly states. 
let's take a look at this my 23f wedding was back on saturday how old's your husband is he in his 30s because that's going to change how i view this entire situation it was back on saturday december 31st new year's uh new year's eve wedding and i'm still getting backlash from this so i want to know if this was an asshole move tennessee we're bad drivers hey i know someone who lives in tennessee well, now i know two people who live in tennessee awesome in the country i live in it's currently winter all right and we get a fair amount of snow so my wedding was a winter themed wedding the winter wonderland the color theme was forest green and gold my dress was obviously white and i chose the color of my bridesmaids dresses to be forest green as well my maid of honor's dress was black okay that's not quite winter themed but all right and everyone was to everyone was to wear gold accessories i have this friend we'll call her cat because that's her real name that i asked to be one of my bridesmaids when we went dress shopping and i told them the color theme i was going for cat immediately expressed that she thought forest green was a bad choice first of all uh forest green is an awesome choice but let's continue she said she she said the thanks it's not a flattering color and thought i should choose something different and more quote unquote girly i said no because my wedding was winter themed and i thought the color would go perfect with the theme she suggested a pink blue even a red i said no but thanks for your opinion <laughs> it's, now is not the time to argue with the the bride here this is this person is insane she found out my maid of honor's dress was black and asked if she could wear black too. I said, no, only my maid of honor is wearing black. I paid for all the dresses. Holy shit. Is that a, is that a thing? Fast forward to wedding day. Everyone's getting their hair and makeup done and Kat shows up 30 minutes late holding a bag that looked like it had a dress inside. I asked her what this was for. She told me it was for later on at the reception if she got uncomfortable and wanted to change after pictures. I was like, okay, cool. Rillip says, I came to court seven minutes late. Am I the asshole? Yes, Rillip. I will judge you as an asshole. You have disrespected me, but I will not eat a bean because that's exactly what you would want. We're going to, I have the beans chat. Hold on. Check, check them out. They're right here. They're always, they're always right here on my desk. They don't go anywhere else. Um, so if anybody gets disrespected during the course of the night, I will eat a bean. We're do yeah, we're doing beans, hover. Uh, yes, these were inspired by Mike's You Laugh, You Lose. I had my wife order some, but they came in this wonderful little uh, stink-proof canister. So you can you can sniff it. Nothing there. You can't smell it. Uh, you can taste it, though, when you, uh, when you get them out. All right, back to the story. Uh, so fast forward, we're all dressed and walking down the stairs because the ceremony is beginning in 30 minutes and we were going to take some pictures before. Kat is the last person to come down and she's wearing a black dress. At the time, I was preoccupied taking pictures with my parents, but my maid of honor came over to me and made me aware of the situation. Like a military commander. Sir, a second black dress has hit the Pentagon. I confronted Kat and asked her what was going on. She said she hates her bridesmaid dress, as the color is ugly and makes her look gross, so she's wearing black. No. I told her, please go back and change. She refused and started walking away from me. I said I'm going to ask her one more time, and if she doesn't oblige, I'm calling security and kicking her out. She began yelling at me to fuck off. Uh, okay, game over. So I called security and asked them to please escort her out. She started making a big scene, yelling how I'm such a bitch that I can't force her to wear anything. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. I'm a horrible, inconsiderate friend. Yeah, I, uh, huh, somebody is here. The wedding went on and it was truly amazing. Ever since the wedding, Cat has been blowing up my phone with text saying some really nasty things and asking for the money back she spent on the black dress since it was a waste and she didn't get to wear it. I had to block her number. Some of my other bridesmaids have been giving me shit saying it was a little harsh kicking her out and embarrassing her like that. What are... These people are your friends? And that maybe I should give her the money back? Am I the asshole for kicking her out? Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um... I mean, this is pretty cut and dry, right, chat? Like... Is there anybody that can even conjure up a way that 
this person could be the asshole here. You'd have to reach pretty dang far. I don't even want to look at the comments because it's just going to be so predictable. Uh, you were not the asshole. You're wetting your rules. It was pretty clear she just didn't want to wear like the, the nice forest green dress that you picked out and paid for, by the way. And then she wants money because she bought a dress that now she didn't even get to wear. It's, it's, I mean, if anything, you should be asking her for money for the green dress that she didn't wear. That you paid for. What the heck? All right. Well, that's that's a nice little appetizer. Bridesmaidzilla. Yeah, the, the wrong person getting angry. Did we? This is for the whole year. Oops. Oh, no. What happened? I fucked it up. Past month. There we go. All right. That's better. Am I the asshole for refusing to tell my husband the gender of our baby after he skipped doing skipped going to the DR appointment with me? DR means doctor, chap. I have fears I'm going to deal with these completely unreasonable people. Um, I don't think it really depends on like how much you put yourself out there. I I've certainly dealt with some unreasonable people, but I was in the army, so basically everybody I interacted with was ridiculous. And now I just don't even leave the house if I can help it. All right, here we go. My husband and I are expecting. This is our first baby and we're excited. I wouldn't be, but okay. Thing is, he barely attends any doctor appointments with me and his excuses aren't even valid. He's willing to miss the doctor appointment over soccer or a drink or board game with friends. Um, yeah. Why, what does he need to be there for? His response is always, I'm not the one carrying the baby. Why do I have to go see the doctor with you? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, not husband of the year material, but... I mean, I wouldn't, if I was a woman, I wouldn't want to have a kid with this guy, but I guess it's too late now. Last week was my final straw. It broke the camel's back. Break his back. He was supposed to come with me for the baby's gender reveal appointment, but he chose to not come last minute because his friend invited him to fish and chips meal. Whoa, 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 fish and chips. Where at? What are we talking about here? I'm down for some for some fish and chips. I was pretty livid, but didn't make a fuss about it. Mom went with me instead. He texted asking me to tell him the results, boy or girl, but I refused to tell him. He kept spam calling me, but I hung up each time. How old are these people? He came home fuming, demanding I tell him the results, and I refused and bluntly told him since he refused to attend the appointment. He gets no results till after the baby's born and said I was willing to die on this hill. He went off calling me spiteful and immature for doing this and punishing him. He said he's the father and has the right to know. He then called me dramatic since I wasn't alone and mom was with me. I said he gets no results, period. Dude, this guy should not be married. Everybody sucks here? Yeah, everybody sucks here. Uh, and especially because they made an update where they said, Hi, so first of all, wow, I did not expect this to blow up. Yeah. This is, yeah, everybody sucks here. The husband obviously sucks, but the wife, the OP here, who's being, I don't know. I wish they gave ages, because if this was like, oh, we're both like 22, I'd be like, okay, so you guys are both a little like, you're a little immature, you're being petty, he's being stupid. But if you guys are in your, like your 30s, hmm. Uh, you see, she she says, this is our first baby and we're excited. It doesn't sound like the husband is very excited. Rillip says, next G. All right, next G. Let's go. Easy. These are too easy. Give me, give me a spicy one. Am I the asshole for getting my daughter a hotel room entirely for herself after her evil stepsisters made her sleep on the floor? Another one of these ones, huh? No, yeah, go, go no contact with your husband. <laughs> Just... Divorce him, get a lawyer, go to the gym. My dad passed away two weeks ago. Okay, sorry. Me, my wife, Candace, Candace Cameron, and my daughter, 16, Shiloh, Shiloh LaBeouf, and her stepsisters, 19 and 17, who do not get names, 
flew to my hometown to attend the funeral. After that, we got two hotel rooms, one for me and Candace. Oh, yeah. One for the girls. While I was in the room, I got a call from Shiloh at 11 p.m. crying and sounded like she was arguing with her stepsisters. I asked what the matter was, and she told me that her stepsisters insisted that she sleep on the floor. There were one large bed in the room, that, and there was enough space for all three girls to sleep on. What the? You're making all three of the girls sleep on one bed? That's ridiculous. Who's in the middle? I asked why, and she said she didn't know. I went to see what the issue was and talked with my stepdaughters about it. They kept talking but didn't really explain why they told her to sleep on the floor. They just shrugged and said, it's better this way. We're more comfortable this way. <laughs> How old are these people? 19 and 17? No, come on. I told Shiloh to grab her things, and when one of my stepdaughters asked where we were going, I told her I was booking her a hotel room. Both looked upset but didn't say anything, but they must have called their mom because she was awake when I got back and started arguing with me about giving Shiloh an entire hotel room for herself. I explained why but why I did it, but she said I wasted money and that Shil Shiloh could have sucked it up for one night on the floor. Why would she have to sleep on the floor? I mean, besides the fact that for some reason you got a hotel room with only one bed for three people. I called her unreasonable. There's no, no disrespect. Okay, we're good. For saying this, but she told me I showed the girls that I'm playing favorites and made my stepdaughter share a room while I gave my daughter an entire room for herself. We went home and Candace is still bringing it up, saying I mishandled this. She even pointed out how my stepdaughters are upset since they're not speaking to me. Um... It was Candace who got a room for three girls as to not stir any drama and save money. She was in charge of hotel reservations since I was emotionally distressed. Also, Candace did not expect Shiloh to sleep on the floor. She wanted all three girls to share the bed. For those that are calling me an asshole for giving my daughter her name, her mom did that and she's deceased, so please let's not focus on that. For those calling me an asshole for giving my daughter her name, whose name? What? Oh, okay. Because, okay, he named her Shiloh. What? People are saying that you're an asshole for naming your daughter Shiloh? Is that a... Is there, like, a bad Shiloh? That, well, like, somebody got canceled? Hold on, I gotta... I gotta search for this. Shiloh. Oh, there's too many. Um... Mm. Uh, wait, 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 go back. There was one. Blah, 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 blah. Not the asshole playing favorite. Okay, no, I don't, I don't see anything. It must have been one of the earlier things. Hover says stepsisters ganged up on sister to her sleep to get her to sleep on the floor and then they talk about playing favorites. Well, it sounds like the mom. It, this always happens in these stories where the parents of the respective step siblings like take the other take their siblings side. I just I'm convinced that blended families do not are not functional. But, you know, that's that's me. Um, yeah, uh, I don't think you're an asshole for doing that. But I do think Candace is an asshole for getting one bed for three people. That's even if they were unless they were like little, little, like 10. And then they could all like sleep in the same bed. But these these are like basically adults and you're trying to get them to all share one hotel bed. That's just silly. It's, it's rough, yeah, the blended family thing. I mean, Brady Bunch made it work. They make it look easy, but it's not going to be the same for everybody. It helped that the dad was like a rich architect. So, you know, he could kind of afford to deal with that kind of stuff. All right, too easy. These have been too easy. Let's look at this one. Am I the asshole for moving my son into a rental apartment after finding out that his dad has been... His dad's been canceling his job applications. Um, I don't, why would you be the asshole in this situation? What could the dad possibly have said? I just want to know. My son Aiden, 23, moved back in with us upon graduating college as my husband wanted. My husband's original plan was to have Aiden live with us for free, but stay home and help with his disabled younger brother. Ooh. 
Aidant started complaining about needing money and wanted to find a job. My husband was against this and even offered to double his allowance, but Aiden was growing tired of staying at home. My dude, this is like the opposite problem that millennials have. First, you get kicked out of the house. Now they're, they won't let you leave the house. He began looking for jobs here and there for over a year, but none of his job applications came through. He'd just apply and they never get back to him. We were confused by this till recently. I found out that my husband was behind all the job applications being canceled. He'd wait till Aiden applies, then he proceeds to cancel the application by impersonating him and using his email. What the fuck? I blew up at him for this, but his justification, he's just trying to make sure that our younger son is cared for by Aiden and said that Aiden has been big help and him getting a job will affect his care for his brother. Dude. I went ahead and rented an apartment for Aiden and told him to stay there till he finds a job and starts paying for it himself. Aiden was hurt upon knowing what his dad did. My husband was livid when he found out. He called me unhinged. He called me unhinged. Holy crap. Mighty Stoosh says, Cthulhu looks strange. This is, Cthulhu was yesterday, Mighty Stoosh. And we haven't started streaming that yet. Um, I don't know if I would even want to stream it. Throw, yeah, throw the entire man away. He said, he called me unhinged and said I was separating the boys and teaching Aiden to become selfish and care more about a job than family. What country is this in? He also said it was a huge decision for me to rent an apartment without even running it with him. Yeah, it was a huge decision for you to cancel all these job applications without running it by anybody. What the fuck? He's been giving me hell about it and is calling me a terrible mother for encouraging Aiden to be selfish. Or as we say in the real world, um, normal and self-centered. He said I needed to see and understand why he did what he did. No, no one needs to see that. Yeah, I don't. Okay, the son is 23, so they're probably in their 40s. Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's just fucked up. What the hell? Don't do that. I, I want to. Okay, here we have an asshole one. Am I the asshole for telling my parents that they ruined New Year's celebration after they kicked my husband out over a stupid joke? What's the big deal? We just made a joke. I've been married to my second husband, Mike. Oh boy, here we go. Second husband situation. For four years now, he's a jokester and loves to crack jokes all the time. He especially liked to joke with my brother, Ethan, and his wife. Ethan used to be okay with it till he started complaining about Mike taking it too far with his jokes. It's one of these guys, chap. 40? Well, okay, if, if you had a kid when you were 23, and now you're 20, and they're 23, you would be 46. Yeah, that's that's pretty reasonable. I was When I was 23, I think my parents would have been 50. So, it's a little bit... It's close, but there's definitely people who have kids younger than that. Some context about Ethan. He and his wife couldn't have kids, so they adopted a boy, Joey, two years ago. Oh, good for them. Mike has been making silly, lighthearted jokes that involve that involving Joey's bio parents as a way to mess with Ethan and his wife. I already talked to Mike, and I tell you that he 100% means no harm, and he was just trying to get them to react. These are these two statements are incompatible. When you try to get people to react, you're basically doing harm, kind of. Also, it's probably not actually funny to anyone but himself. Rillip says, I'll be 45 when my oldest is 23. See, there you go. Rillip, Rillip knows what's up. Fast forward to New Year's Eve. My parents hosted a big celebratory dinner and Ethan and his wife came. While we were eating dinner, Mike decided to tell a knock-knock joke to Ethan. Chad, you want to hear a joke? Knock-knock. Ethan laughed and said, who's there? Mike replied, Joey's bio parents. Then he bursted out laughing. What's the, what's the joke? That's not funny at all. I don't get it. Silence took over and Ethan's facial expressions changed. His wife called Mike an idiot, to which Mike replied, Hey, relax. It was just a joke. An argument. It's not a joke if you're the only person laughing, my dude. An argument ensued 
An argument ensued. Notice how they write it like that. And dinner was paused. My parents suddenly told Mike to leave, which I thought was too harsh. I tried to speak to them and get them to calm down, but mom insisted that Mike leave. We left and Mike was complaining the whole time about how they overreacted. I called mom later and she told me Mike was out of line with his hurtful jokes about this touchy topic and told me I was wrong for defending him and saying he was just joking. She said he ruined New Year's for the family, but I told her it was her and dad who ruined New Year's celebration for escalating the situation and kicking him out. Ah, it is not I that is wrong. It is you that is wrong. Also, that's Vulcan Rider who said that, not Rillip. I need to get a bigger screen to read chat. Or I need to get glasses. Hey, Vulcan Rider, how's it going? Uh, blah, 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 blah. She said he ruined blah, blah, blah. I told her he could talk to them. But again, they were the they were the ones who ruined New Year's celebration. She called me delusional for this statement and hung up. We haven't talked to them for days. I tried contacting Ethan, but no response. Um, okay. It's pretty clear that Mike, if that is his real name, is the asshole. Because he's a, he loves to crack jokes, guys. He just sees the world like one big joke. And then he tells jokes that he thinks are hilarious, but nobody else does. When he knows um, that, I don't know, it's, it's like, it's hurtful to the people he's telling the jokes to. What is his goal? I realize not everybody acts rationally 100% of the time. But presumably he wants to he wants people to laugh along with him or does he just want to piss people off? In which case he's not a jokester, he's just an asshole, which is fine, but the name of the subreddit is am I the asshole and yes, you would be the asshole in that situation. I, yeah, he's one of those I have no filter people. Or, Vulcan Rider, rather than having them early and getting them out of the house while you and your wife are still young, you can simply never have kids and enjoy a peaceful, kid-free existence with your wife or husband and uh, just have a great life. So much easier, so much cheaper, too. Uh, what, are, what are the comments say? You're the asshole. Your husband likes to hurt people. It's nothing to do with jokes. Yeah, there you go. He's not funny. Uh, he's just an asshole. You're the asshole for standing up for him. You should be like, uh, hello, that, that wasn't funny. Like, you need to not say stuff like that. I don't know. There you go. Am I the asshole for leaving my babies inside by themselves? No, that's fine. Am I the asshole for refusing to forgive my dad for breaking our deal? That doesn't, that just sounds sad. Uh, am I the asshole for pretending not to recognize my parents when they tried to reconnect? Ooh, here we go. This sounds good. I was raised mostly by my uncle and aunt. My older sister developed a serious illness when I was six and my parents decided they couldn't care for both of us, I guess. So they kind of unceremoniously dumped me at my grandparents and my uncle took me in. Like, didn't even explain to me what was going on. Just, you're going to go visit Gran for a while and never pick me back up. My grandparents and uncle explained it later, and they were pretty livid at my parents. Y yeah. I've seen my parents maybe five times since then, and not at all for the last nine years. I decided to stop having contact with them when I was 12, and since I was the only one reaching out, all communication broke down. It turned out okay. I love my un aunt and uncle, and it turns out they can't have kids. So they've always said I'm their miracle kid. I was just misrouted by the stork at first. Okay, he's got a good sense of humor about it. I was formally adopted by them when I turned 18. How Wait a minute. How do, how do you adopt an adult? Can you do that? Is this like that TikTok trend where older guys adopt like adult women to come live with them? All right, well... Uh, I wish it had been earlier, but there was some red tape things that would have made that really expensive and difficult. I'm 21 now. My sister passed away between Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I made a trip back from school for the funeral, but I stayed in the back and left before my bio parents could talk to me. They called my uncle to try to talk to me, but I said I didn't want to, so he told them I wasn't available at the moment. 
They finally caught up to me over Christmas when I went to midnight mass with my gran and approached me and tried to give me a hug. I did recognize them, but I pretended not to and just backed off and said, sorry, do I know you? They said, we're your parents. And I said, my parents are at home and went and sat down with my gran. They sat behind us and I could just feel the stare. And on the way out, they were like, you really don't recognize us? And I said, oh, are you my dad's brother? I think I remember you from when I was little. <laughs> oh, man. This guy's got jokes. See, this is how this is how you do jokes. My grand thinks they deserved it trying to come back to me like nothing happened, but they wrote me a long letter about how hurt they are and how I should understand that they were trying to do the right thing and how they'll always be my parents and I can't change that. Actually, legally, you can. In fact, you did. Other family members think I was too harsh as they're grieving, but I don't think they should get a pass just because they remembered me now that my sister is gone. Yeah. Um, no, this is, this is a awful situation, first of all. Y like, just dumping your kid on your parents instead of, like, negotiating a little bit. Like, hey, listen, our, our daughter developed a serious illness, and we cannot afford to take care of both of the kids, so... Can you please, like, take over some of the parenting duties while we try to deal with this awful situation that we we now found, find ourselves in? Not just like, you're going to go hang out at Grand's house and we're out of here. Goodbye. That is the 100% not the right way to do it. Parents are huge assholes. Don't have kids if you can't take care of them. Well, it sounds like they could, but then their daughter had an illness, which... That's kind of an unforeseeable thing. But yeah, I agree. That's why I don't have kids. That's why I'm sure a lot of people my age don't have kids. Because they realize they can't afford to take care of them. And they don't want to be bad parents like these people. Am I the asshole? Here we go. We have, we have a certified asshole for showing up to my husband's doctor appointment. Healthcare. Yeah, America moment. Only in America, or maybe some other countries. I don't know, like North Korea. Like, oh, you're dying? Okay, well, good luck with that. My husband has been dealing with sewn health issues the past few weeks and has been frequently visiting the doctor. I asked if I could go with him, but he refused, saying it wouldn't be necessary. And when I asked why he wouldn't want me with him, he said he felt more comfortable having privacy with his doctor. I jokingly asked if his doctor was a woman, was a woman, and he glanced at me. I anticipated, I antici, no, it's spelled right. Okay, I was just, there were so many typos before I just assumed it was. His next doctor appointment and decided to go meet him there. He went and 10 minutes later, I entered the office. I identified myself as his wife and he was shocked when he saw me. I greeted his doctor, a man, lol, and we talked, but my husband refused to even look my way and refused to speak as well. We left the office together and we went off on me and he went off on me in the car saying I shouldn't have followed him and came into the doctor office after he asked me for some privacy. I said it was all right. I'm his wife. I already even know what his issues are and just wanted to show support. He said I overstepped his one boundary and refused to respect his wish and made him more stressed out than he already is in these hard times he's going through. I thought he overreacted, but am I the asshole? Um, well, according to the, the comments, you are, um, hmm. and yeah, kind of, I mean, just cause you're his wife doesn't mean you get 100% all access to every single thing that he does at all times. Like there are boundaries in every relationship, including a marriage. And I think I'm sure everybody in chat hopefully will agree with that. Unless you're like a overly attached girlfriend or something. He's your husband. Yeah, he's your husband, not your baby. You don't. He's an adult. He can go there by himself. Like if he asked you, if he's like, hey, you know, I'm like, I'm having a hard time, like with these appointments and I would like you to be there. That's one thing. If he's like, I feel more comfortable when you're not there. So please, like, just let me do this by myself. And then you're like, ah, surprise. Hey, how's your, how's your butt exam going? Let's get in there. Let's take a look. And, uh, yeah, no, that's, we don't have to look at the comments. That's pretty cut and dry. These are, these are too easy this, this month, chat. 
Wait a minute. I saw this one at the beginning of the stream when I opened up the page and oh, this is I didn't click on it, but am I the asshole for forcing my son to use a bidet and threatening to talk to his friends or take him to the doctor about his underwear chat? We have here. Well, I don't, how do you even describe this? the first sentence oh god for some reason my 14 year old son cannot wipe properly this was never a concern to me as his mom did the laundry what what the this was never a concern to me as his mom did the laundry mighty stoosh already read this one. Oh man this is this is pure gold chat we struck we stuck struck brown gold here tonight Unfortunately, she's sick, so now I have to take over the household chores that she used to handle. My son is still responsible for his, and I do mine as well as hers. First day I did laundry, I gagged and almost puked from his underwear. If he were three and not fully potty trained, I might understand how they end up like this, but he's a healthy young man. He should not be leaving his ass this unwiped. <laughs> is, is your son a Redditor by chance? Maybe, maybe he hangs out on 4chan too much. I talked to him about it, and he said he would make an effort to do a better job. Nope. No change in the situation. So I went to the hardware store and installed a wand bidet in the bathroom he uses. We already have one in ours. I told him he has a choice. Either use the bidet or wash your own underwear. He doesn't know how to use the washing machine, and he refuses to do them by hand. He started going commando. <laughs> It just keeps getting better. This is amazing. Which just me meant the problem was in his genes now. So I said we might need to take him to the doctor to see what is wrong with him, if it's physical or psychological. I also said that next time his friends were over, I was going to ask them if they left their underwear in the same condition. <laughs> oh, man. I would never actually embarrass him like that. Maybe you should. He said I was being an asshole and he called his mom to tell her what I was doing. She said he was just like that. And I could deal with... He's just like that? And I could deal with it until she was better. What do you mean he's just like that? Dude. No. Just... It's not that hard to... Holy crap. I don't think that's a great plan. If this kid never learns to wipe his ass, he will be bereft of a sexual partner. He will grow up to be a redditor without a poop with oh without a poop fetish. I'm not kink shaming him if that's his thing. <laughs> yeah, mommy's little shit might. He started using the bidet, but he says that it is gross and weird. I said it was grosser and weirder for a 14 year old to crap his pants every day. We are both stressed about his mom, but the situation isn't because of her. I asked her. <laughs> this is amazing. This is from three days ago. It is shot to the top of the MI the asshole for the entire past 30 days. This prop this must have hit the front page at some point. This is there's no way this can be real, right? It's almost so absurd that I it has to be real. Cause nobody would nobody would come up with this situation unless it actually happened. Because this is so insane. Mighty Stu says, Bidet is weird, but people love it. Only tried one once. Here are my thoughts on a bidet. Because people always swear by these things. How is me squirting some water on my asshole going to get it more clean than actually, like, wiping it? Unless it's, like, a pressure washer. And it's, like, really cleaning it out in there. Like, you're getting the full enema every time you take a dump. I cannot imagine it does that much better of a job. Like people are like, oh, I feel so much cleaner now. And I'm like, what if there's no soap? Like you're not using soap. You're not using a, a sponge or a washcloth or anything. And you're just squirting water on your asshole. I'm under it. Oh, it is. Okay. It's, it is like a pressure washer. Well, that's even worse. I don't want that every time I go to the bathroom. Listen, just, just take a shower. First of all, chat, I'm, I don't have to tell you guys this, but if you're listening, if you're a YouTuber and you're watching this, um, wipe your ass until there's nothing. 
Step one. Well, okay. So I understand sometimes you got like a you got like a, a marker situation going on and you keep wiping and it keeps coming. All the parks and rec Chris Pratt's character style. Uh and then like get it clean get it good enough that it's not gonna be on your fucking underwear. And then when you take a shower, actually like wash your ass. Like, oh, get in there. Don't leave the dingleberries. Get in there. Clean it out. Use soap. And then you don't have to be a fucking cringe lord incel who can't wipe his own ass because he thinks it's gay. Because he watched a he watched an alpha male video that said touching your asshole is gay. So never do it. Relip says you always have to wipe three times to know you only needed to wipe twice. Exactly. Listen to Sun Tzu. He knows what he's talking about. I got to read the comments. This is insane. Not the asshole. 14's a little late in life to be learning how to clean your butt after using the toilet. Your wife is doing him no favors by allowing and coddling this behavior. Oh, boy. Story time. Okay, this guy, we got a whole extra story. We have some DLC content in this Reddit post. It's 2006, my mom was having surgery, and I was called back to the recovery area to sit next to her as she recovered from her anesthesia. It was quiet. There were only a few other patients around, and one directly across from us. The person in the bed was positioned lying on their stomach instead of on their back. It seemed to be a teenaged boy. Both his parents were there waiting for him to come around. My mom was still out, and this was pre-smartphone, so the most I could do was read the book I brought with me. Well, entertainment quickly ensued as the surgeon for the boy across the way came to talk to the parents. I heard the surgeon talk with the family, and there seemed to be some quick words going back and forth between the parents and the surgeon. Finally, I heard the surgeon say loudly and emphatically that unless the boy learned to wipe himself better and be completely clean, he would need he would be right back here for another surgery. I have no idea what kind of surgery the boy had to have for not wiping himself, but every time I read something on Reddit about guys not wiping their asses, it's, it's, it's always on Reddit. I always think of that kid in the recovery room. Man, holy crap. Yeah, get in there. Yeah, you can quote me on that. I don't care. I... I don't know. This is... Oh, it's gross and weird. 14. Yeah, 14 is like... You're in high school, man. Like, figure it out. Okay. Next. Uh, that that was too good. I don't we cannot there's no way. I don't think we can ever top that. That was the funniest shit I have ever read on these streams. Am I the asshole for high-fiving a stranger who humiliated my BF? Was he disrespected though? That's what I want to know. We'll see it. We'll see. He might say disrespected. I haven't read the whole thing yet. My boyfriend and I go to the climbing gym regularly. He's really into it and I just started I just started and climbing a few times a week. He's stupidly competitive about it and quietly insults beginners who are not as good, which makes me feel self-conscious because I'm a beginner. Last night we were at the climbing gym again and he was doing a V6. I don't know what that means. There was about six people taking turns on the problem, probably because it's a newly installed route and they were all failing. Okay, so this is some kind of climbing thing. Then a girl came and flashed it. You, you gotta explain these words. I don't know. She made it so easy, but at the end, she didn't hold the final hold for five seconds, and my BF called her out after she was done. Holding the last hold for five seconds is supposed to be the right way of finishing her out, but she was doing it so easily, she definitely could have. I think he was just being salty because she did it when he couldn't. She laughed and told him he didn't even start the problem correctly and walked off. I gave her a high five because she was walking towards me and did amazing at the problem and knocked my boyfriend off his high horse. She was surprised, but high fived me. My boyfriend turned to me and gave me a what the fuck look and wouldn't talk to me for the rest of the night. When we were heading home, he ranted that I couldn't be trusted to watch his back if I chose to take a stranger's side over him. I was shocked. That's what he took from the climb and told him she shouldn't told him she shouldn't have. He shouldn't have nitpicked her. When she clearly climbed it correctly and he got mad and argued I was supposed to take his side over people I don't even know. So there was no disrespect. I mean, there was some disrespect here, but it was not mentioned in the post. So I'm not going to eat a bean. And, uh, no, you're not the asshole. I think your, your boyfriend sounds like an asshole. 
why are you dating this person? Guess what? The top comment. Why are you dating this guy? Oh, no, it's not. Well, whatever. Not the asshole. He was being petty, jealous, and a bit sexist, calling her out. None of his business, and she told him off. Carl Gordon Jenkins says, Gotta love all the males. Males. Insisting no aspect of this was possibly sexist. Mm-hmm. My brother in Christ, you do not need to be co-signed on every single thing. That's what I'm talking about. Like, you're a team, but not necessarily on every single issue. Especially in this case, when you're, being, you're, you're clearly just being a jerk to people at the climbing gym, and somebody shows you up. Okay, here we go. Next one. Am I the asshole for telling my wife it was a mistake? to stay at a baby shower. Why would it be a mistake, chat? Oh, it's a fucking novel. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Let me get comfortable. So my wife, 26F, and I, 28M, I'll allow it, have been married for a year and begin trying to conceive in September. Gross, but okay. No luck so far, but the doctor did say at our first appointment that it typically takes close to a year for most couples to conceive what the is that true because in high school they taught us that if you have sex once you'll get pregnant and then you'll get aids and then you'll die which i'm pretty sure is true which is why i've never had sex she's been telling people that she's infertile which isn't true doctor said she isn't my wife and i went to my work christmas party in mid-december where my wife met my co-worker's wife let's call her mary and they took a liking to each other their bosom friends. Mary was pregnant and invited my wife to her baby shower, which was yesterday. Uh, so 18 days ago, according to the time of this post. And my wife sounded excited to go. I asked her when we were alone if she thinks she'll be fine. I know my wife and I know that I know what typically bothers her. I knew she wouldn't bask in happiness over someone else's pregnancy. So I urged her to think it through. She said she's fine. I'm fine. And she was excited. So she went. The baby shower was yesterday. About 40 minutes in, she calls and asks me to come. It was at a cafe nearby because I knew she wouldn't stay long. Oh, I was at a cafe nearby because I knew she wouldn't stay long. Oh, he he read the, the situation pretty well. I find her at the entrance of the house crying and a bunch of women consoling her. When she saw me, she came to me and pulled me to the garden to talk. She said she was dancing and looked at Mary's pregnant belly and couldn't take it anymore. It's like taking my wife to an animal movie. Started crying and ran out. All of Mary's friends followed her out to console her. I consoled her myself and said, okay, let's go, babe. Where do you want to go? We can go for a drive so you can feel better. She looked at me weird and asked why she would leave. I asked why she would stay. She said she feels better now and can go have a good time. I sighed and said, babe, babe, you know that's not going to happen. And I doubt the attention will be on Mary after this. And that's not great. It's her baby shower and she deserves to be celebrated. I can see how people are going to shift their focus from consoling you to celebrating her if you're still there. Oh, I can't see how. Okay. She rolled her eyes at me and said she was going back and that I could leave. Three hours later, later the party was nearing its end. So I go back to pick her up. My coworker and I stepped into the house and lo and behold, everyone is sitting in a circle with my wife being the center of attention. That's not how that works. His husband is based. Yeah, he's based, but the wife apparently is um, a little uh, unaware of her own problems. Coworker looked for his wife and she wasn't there at all. He called her and she said she had left ages ago. What? My wife and I entered the car and I first asked her how she was feeling and we spoke about it for a few minutes. I then asked her what happened and why Mary left. She said, oh crap, Mary, I forgot to say bye to her. I told her Mary left ages ago, and then I said, I know you're going through a hard time, but why on earth would you and her friends do this? If they consoled you for a few minutes, that's fine, but the entire party, we really should have left earlier. She looked at me so offended and said, are you Mary's husband's or mine? We stared at each other for a while and just drove home in silence. I told her I want to talk to her this morning to sort things out, but she ignored me and left the house. Okay, so this is a totally alien situation for me. Wife is sus. I mean, the wife is a little sus. I don't know. 
in what way specifically much like how mr beast is demonic but i can't explain why okay so couple want to have kids haven't had a kid yet doctor says it typically takes close to a year despite the fact that it seems like in every piece of media i've ever seen the teenage girl gets pregnant their her first time having sex or whatever i guess that's more dramatic um but and rather than just like okay well you know the doctor said it'll take a while no big deal right she instead decides oh i don't have a baby and then i saw a pregnant woman and then i started crying at her own ba at at the pregnant woman's own baby shower like i don't i don't even get it well i have nothing to say to this like what is going on here is this a thing that people do people want to have a baby so much they'll okay not the asshole let's see what the comments have to say your wife turned someone's uh, someone else's celebration into her own pity party to the point that the guest of honor left her own shower and doesn't realize she did anything wrong do you really want to have a child with a woman like that of course first thing that comes out of every freaking am i the asshole post comment are you sure you want to be in this relationship I guess if you have to post about it on Reddit, the answer is probably no. But yeah, I don't get that one. I don't know. Hus yeah, husband understands. It's like when my wife, like I said, she cannot, she's not allowed to watch animal movies anymore. Um, yeah, I, I, so I have for these posts, I do have the face cam on. Hey, hey, it's me, Star Shard. Um, but typically, I, because otherwise it would just me, it would just be me sitting here staring at the screen. So I don't, I don't have the actual little tiny webcam on. It would be down here. So we just replace it with the judge from Night Court because he's funnier. But I do switch to the camera if I have to eat a bean because like 90% of the fun of me eating a bean. Yeah, no, here, I can actually show you. It's, uh, it's, oh, it is overlaid, kind of. The judge is blocking it. But uh, that is intentional, so... He's also more dead. Yeah, he is he is deader. He's funnier and deader than I am. But what I was okay. So Emmykins is not allowed to watch animal movies. And if she ever says, I'm gonna watch what like the fox and the hound or whatever, I'm like, are you sure you wanna watch that movie? Because I don't wanna I don't wanna come home and you're like bawling your eyes out because there were animals and it was sad. And then she's like, no, you're right. All right. Am I the asshole for telling my husband he exaggerated when he said my kids ruined his daughter's birthday? Am I the asshole for telling my husband he exaggerated when he said my kids ruined his daughter's birthday? There's this is I can't keep track of all this. Last week was my stepdaughter's 14th birthday. Stepdaughter's name is SD. She was in the hospital days prior for a medical medical issue, and now she's better. My husband threw her a small birthday party. Unbeknownst to me, my boys, 16 and 12, decided to pull a funny prank and mess with the birthday cake that they made for her. Instead of adding icing on the cake, they added mayonnaise. Chat. As a lover of mayonnaise... As a, as a card-carrying white male who loves mayonnaise. Why would you ruin a cake? You're a, you're a 16 and 12-year-old. Presumably you like cake. Why would you ruin a cake that you would then eat? Fun, yeah, fun, real funny prank, I guess. It didn't go well, and my stepdaughter's reaction was to cry. Yep. Yep. Okay, here, here's how you make this prank funny. You bring out a fake cake with the mayonnaise, and then you're like, oh, we got you. Don't worry, we got a real cake. It's good. There's no mayonnaise on this one. Um, but it sounds like they just ruined her birthday cake, which is not a funny prank. It's just fucked up. 
Uh, my husband blew up at the boys for what they did, but they said they were just trying to prank her since it's the norm and they always prank each other's. Ah, I put laxative in your cake. What a funny prank. It's just a prank, bro. It's funny if there is, yeah, if there's a real cake, like as a backup, then you can ruin the, 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 the fake cake, the prank cake, whatever you want to call it. But you can't just ruin someone's birthday cake. My husband said it was the wrong time to do this on our birthday, especially after getting out of the hospital. He told the boys they ruined her birthday, but I told him he exaggerated with this statement. What? No, he ruined their bir her birthday. What do you mean? There's no exaggeration. He got upset and yelled at me for defending this behavior and being an enbler. I don't. I am because the boys love her. That's why they act like this. But my husband was having none of it. The boys love her. Therefore, they ruin her birthday cake. And I like this one. It's, it's short and sweet. And it's very clear who the asshole is. It is that entire side of the once again blended family. Did I notice the dynamic? Um, The dynamic between. Oh, wait. Oh, this is weird. Oh, it's the guy's boys who ruined his, the stepdaughter's birthday. This is, whoa, this is flip-flopped. I did not notice that. That's unusual. Kind of a role reversal. But yeah. R rule of thumb, ecstatic increase 447 has some great life advice for everybody. When you show love to people, they don't generally get reduced to crying. That's a real easy way to know you owe someone an apology. They hurt you because they like you. Hmm. Curious. If they like me so much, why do they bully me? Wait, wait a minute. Is this real? Am I the asshole for prioritizing my parrot over my stepdaughter's wedding? Okay. If it hadn't been for that horse, I never would have gone to college. I'm the owner of a wonderful rescue macaw. She's a wonderful bird, but has a lot of issues due to an abusive former home. I've had her for three years, and since they haven't taken any vacations or trips away... And oh, and since then, haven't taken any vacation or trips away as it would be too disruptive for her. She just trusts everyone and is very reliant on her routine. It's a fucking bird. I love her deeply and I'm happy to make sacrifices for her. They are permanent toddlers and very intelligent birds. I met my husband by the time his kids were older. My stepdaughter was 16 at the time. We married when she moved away for college. Nevertheless, I thought we'd managed to have a decent relationship until now. My stepdaughter is getting married in March, and naturally there's a lot of preparation involved. They're wanting a huge traditional wedding, and she is stressed out of her mind. They live out of state, and she invited me recently to come visit her for a week to help make wedding plans and spend time with their two-year-old. Okay. I declined, and she insisted to know why, acting very hurt, and I explained the parrot. Well, it all went downhill from there. She caused a massive fuss with her dad. Uh, aka my husband saying she never got a mother figure and I never accepted her as my full blood daughter yep and this is the ultimate snub for a silly animal do not do not call someone's pet silly chat emmykins will knife you in minecraft that I'm told I'm cold and emotionless I feel really hurt and I can tell he agrees with her even though he's refusing to take sides by not taking a side, you are in fact taking a side. But I don't see why I should be expected to take holiday time off work to babysit and bond all of a sudden, and I don't see how I'm a monster for this. Am I the asshole here? The edits are as long as the original post. We're not gonna read them all. Yeah, if you were yeah, if if your dad marries a new woman when you're 16, that the ship is sailed. There, you, it, she's not gonna be. I mean, there are like, oh, there are certain situations where that might be the case, where you're like, okay, well, you know, new mom two is here now. But at that point, like, 
What do you mean you never got a mother figure? Like, what happened to her mom? I guess she doesn't explain. Oh, wait, maybe there's more. Hold on. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I called my stepdaughter and told her this is a big moment and she wants someone there. We talked a bit. Um, fake replacement. She now regrets it and would like a closer relationship. We ended the conversation positively. Oh, well. All right, not the asshole then. Yeah, easy enough. We don't even have to read anymore. Am I the asshole for priori prioritizing my son's dog over my wife's pregnancy? Another pet replacing family member type one. When my son, 14, was eight, he got a dog. He's half Great Dane and half some dog my friend's dog met during an unauthorized absence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sure, that's one way to describe it. My son loves this dog and does uh, all the care for him except vet stuff and is very responsible dog owner. The dog is pretty much his best friend. My wife is 12 weeks pregnant. Um, how many, how many total would there be chat? How many weeks is a full pregnant? And ever since we confirmed the pregnancy, she's been acting weird around the dog. She avoids him, puts her hands over her stomach when he's around, and jolts whenever he makes noise. She's acting more like an animal than the dog is. Today, she told me she wants to rehome the dog. I asked her what she was talking about. She said she has been having anxiety that he will jump on her. This is completely unreasonable. He doesn't jump on people. We trained him not to jump on people. Well, hold on now. Hold on. How many people with dogs have you met that are like he's not usually like this he's usually very friendly 12 weeks is one third most women don't know they're pregnant that early Tw at 12 weeks what do you mean you don't know you're pregnant by then this is how they made that show i didn't know i was pregnant because apparently you just don't even notice you're pregnant you're just like oh i'm getting awfully fat Okay, she said, there's no way to know for sure the dog won't jump on her, and if he does, our baby could be hurt. This dog has never so much as growled at her. She said, even if the dog doesn't jump on her, her anxiety about it is bad for her health. She said she needs the dog elsewhere for her safety and the baby's. I told her there's no way. My son got his this dog right after he lost his mom and imprinted on him hard. Sometimes I think he loves the dog more than me. I'm not taking his dog. The dog didn't do anything. My wife said I'm prioritizing the dog over her pregnancy. The dog isn't a threat to her pregnancy. If this were any other unreasonable request, I would just do it because she's pregnant. But I can't break my son's heart over a fear she has that makes no sense. Am I being an asshole? This is a rough one because I, I both don't want kids and I don't like dogs. Um, But uh, I think my dislike of children is going to overrule my dislike of dogs on this one. Because if my wife, through some freak accident, managed to get pregnant somehow and decided to have the baby. And then she said, oh, I need you to get rid of our cat because he might hurt the baby. I would be like, no, you're out of your mind. I mean, she would never do that because she doesn't want kids and she loves our cat. But it's just like, that's a completely unreasonable request. What? Maybe Reddit has more. Not the asshole. Has she stopped driving? Has she started using a wheelchair so she won't fall? Is she refusing to use stairs? She needs some counseling. Genuinely, not being rude, to figure out why she's only fixated on the dog and reacting to sound similar to PTSD symptoms. Did you train the dog not to jump because he pushed her over at some point? Was she pushed by a dog as a child? Something got in her head. Or she's always hated the dog and is manipulating you now that she sees her chance to get rid of it. Huh. Yeah, that's that's weird. That's a that's a situation I cannot relate to at all because again, no kids, no dogs. Please keep them away from me. I don't want them slobbering all over my face. Am I the asshole for telling my husband's parents to stop telling people my name is Catherine and for embarrassing them in front of friends? Am I the asshole for telling my husband's parents to stop telling people my name is Catherine. My name is Quatherine with a Q. Get it right. And for embarrassing. Okay, so she is embarrassing her husband's parents in front of friends because they keep saying that her name is Catherine. Let's go. My name is Rin. Just. Isn't this the. Uh... 
Is this is this from the game, Catherine? My name is Rin, just Rin, not Catherine, but ever since my uh, in-laws have met me, they've gotten the idea that my actual name is Catherine and Rin is just a nickname. I have asked them to introduce me, not to introduce me or tell people it's my name, but they always go back to it. My husband and I took a small break from them when it continued, and they apologized and seemed to be doing better. Then for my mother-in-law's birthday, we were invited to celebrate with them, and a couple of her friends come came up to me and asked me if I was Catherine. They said mother-in-law talked all about me. I decided to get a bit, little bit jokey instead of annoyed and played on, up on it saying, Mother-in-law is so forgetful and that I was so sorry she told them the wrong name, that I'll need to write my name on everything she owns so she don't forget. Her friends found it funny but told her it was weird that she gave them the wrong name. She and father-in-law came up to me close to the end of the party and I told them to stop telling people my name is Catherine. They need to accept my name isn't up to them. They claim I was rude. No disrespect, though. And that it was awful for me to try and embarrass them in front of their friends by joking with mother-in-law's friends. My husband told them they should have listened, but they are saying I took it too far and maybe I did. Am I the asshole? Why would you? This is such a stupid thing to do. It's like it's someone's name. Like, imagine if your name was Lex and it was like, oh, this is my friend Alexander. It's like, no, I my name is just Lex. It's not short for anything. It's just Lex. It's the same thing here. It's my name is just Rin. Rin. Like like from Fate Stay Night. But spelled differently. Oh boy. What is it with people and not wanting to use people's names? Alright, we're almost done with this this front page, and then we'll move on to the next piece. Am I the asshole for telling my son he has to go to university, get a job, or get out? Um, I I know most people are going to be like, no. But I feel like, yeah, okay. You get, go to university, get a job, or get out. Like, you got to do something. You can't just sit around and be a neat your whole life. I don't have a lot of patience for people like that. Because um, I didn't get the opportunity to be a neat. I had to graduate high school and then immediately join the army. So there, I have not had a like good time in my life since I was, I don't know, maybe like 12. Am I the asshole for calling my girlfriend disgusting and telling her she should she should be ashamed when she was crying? Whoa, whoa. How did this end up being not the asshole? Relip is going to go grab a drink. I should take a drink too because my, my throat's getting a little, a little toasty here. Okay. I'm a 40-year-old man. My girlfriend of a year is 38. She has a daughter from a previous partner who is 14 and a freshman in high school. Does she wipe her ass, though? I went over there yesterday to find my girlfriend crying. I tried to figure out what was going on and where I could help when she told me she was crying about her daughter and how she's doing in school. I love her daughter. She's the sweetest girl ever. I wish my daughters were as well-behaved as her. I have to describe her daughter. You, you don't have to, but okay, I guess you can. She has a nice friend group, does not have trouble with bullies, and generally seems very happy. I bet you're wondering why her mother would be crying if this was the case. My mother, her oh, her mother, slash my girlfriend, was crying because her daughter is not the popular athlete, cheerleader, homecoming queen that she was in school. Her daughter marches to the beat of her own drum, which I think is the best anyone can hope for. Yes, she's a little dorky. Oh, she just loves those Marvel movies. Oh, man, she's such a dork. But her own mother referred to her as a loser during this crying fit. Dude, I wish my parents had called me a loser in high school. Maybe I would have, I don't know, shaped up a little bit. But they were so supportive. Kind of. Uh, she's very into anime. Oh, God. Pokemon, which is an anime, and video games. What a loser. Most of her wardrobe is black t-shirts with anime or okay, so she goes to Hot Topic. Again, she's a happy kid. She's got her social circle who all have similar interests. It's just that not the circle her mom wishes she was in. Here are some quotes from her during this that turned me red, just like the movie. I never would have imagined my daughter would be a dweeb. She needs to grow out of this before college. And my personal favorite, I wouldn't have been caught dead with the kids that look like that. <laughs> wow. 
Pokemon is an anime. Yeah, there there is a Pokemon anime. It's true. Maybe you've heard of it. It's been going for like 20 years. I called her disgusting and told her she should be ashamed of herself. I said her daughter's happy and how would she feel to hear her mom crying about her perceived popularity? I told her how lucky she was. She has it that her daughter doesn't deal with a lot of the issues kids these days have. Kids have been having these kids these days, right? I mean, this was basically me in high school. This ends with her being upset at me because instead of consoling her when she was crying, I called her names. I don't think the crying means anything. She was saying horrible things. I guess that's the flip side of like if somebody's crying. Like if you're crying because your daughter isn't as popular as you want her to be, that's not cry worthy. You, you can't just be sad about things that you don't like. Not the asshole, not gonna lie. I, I had my mind made up when I read the title, but her words are absolutely disgusting. I, yeah. Having a happy, healthy child is what her focus should be, not her popularity. Don't ignore her words, though. She's just shown her true colors. Are you sure you want to yeah, just steal the daughter and get rid of this woman? Am I the asshole for saying I can't attend my sister's child-free wedding? This is this is bait. Pure Reddit. Wait. No, it, it should be the other way. It should be my my sister wants to bring her child to my wedding and i told her no am i the asshole my 25 sister 31 let's say her name's lisa is getting married later this year the wedding is child free i'm currently pregnant and at the time of the wedding we'll have a five month baby i asked lisa if she could come as well but lisa said no i accept that and told her i won't be able to attend i don't feel comfortable leaving my young kid with a sitter and my family would be at the wedding Lisa's pretty pissed off and said I'm trying to act holier than thou and punishing her for having a child-free wedding. No, she's just not bringing a child. That's what you wanted. She said she wants me to be there and give a speech as the sister of the bride, but I told her I can't attend if I can't bring my baby. She replied some of her friends have kids and they know a lot of trusted sitters and they'll give me the numbers, but I refuse. It's a five-month-old. You can't just... I mean, maybe you can. I don't know what the rules are. Rilla, what are the rules on... Uh babysitting for uh, like a tiny infant i don't know how much five months is in the grand scheme of things mom said she could stay home with the baby while i attend a part of the ceremony and then she'll come and i'll go home but lisa wants her parents to be there the whole time i don't know i'm just looking out for myself and my kid but i might be being the asshole lisa's upset that i'm not attending i feel like you're getting if you want to have a child-free wedding, you can't then also get upset when people don't show up because they can't bring their kid. Like, that's part of the deal. Like, you are allowed to have a child-free wedding, but you don't then get to complain that people aren't coming in. All right, so Rillip is saying at five months old, my parents would watch them for an hour or two while we took a nap or something, but we wouldn't leave the house. Yeah. So going to a wedding for a whole day and leaving them with like a, a sitter is not... And this is, okay, someone is reiterating exactly what I said. Not the asshole. People are allowed to have child-free weddings. They are not allowed to be offended when people don't come. Yeah. So you're not the asshole. Am I the asshole for walking out of a restaurant on my GF? Let's find out why first. It's short and sweet. Girlfriend and I were having dinner at a restaurant when she got a text from her best friend who recently gave birth. And she said, OMG, she got a C-section. She works as a nurse, so she ex then explained to me the type of incision they make for that and how it'll leave a scar. Oh, okay, that's interesting. I then, as a joke, said, at least she'll still be tight down there. Um, shouldn't have said that. Should not have said that. My GF looked confused and then said that was a weird comment to make about her friend. I then said, it's a very normal joke to make and she disagreed. Um, actually, it's a very normal joke to make. <laughs> right in the garbage, says Rilla. Too long, didn't read. There was some back and forth. I asked her to drop it, and she kept trying to talk about it. I said to her, you're so insecure. N nope, you're just, you're digging that hole even deeper. And she then goes, does it make you feel good to call me that? So then I got really frustrated. 
And then I slapped the chicken nuggets out of her hand. Got up and walked out of the restaurant and drove home. She called me several times. I drove both of us there. <laughs> this dude is fucked. What the heck? Uh, but I was so frustrated and just wanted to get home. So I turned my phone off. This guy is um, a 14 year old who doesn't wipe his ass. She showed up at our apartment 30 minutes later and was really pissed. Called me an asshole and, and overreacted. And that she waited in the cold for 20 minutes for an Uber. Am I the asshole for walking out on her and leaving her there for being frustrated? Obviously, yes. I, the, man, the man dug his own grave. This guy... The fact that he would even come on here and then type all this out and then think that he's in the right... It's... Insane to me. How can you type all this out and then be like... Um, I'm definitely okay because that joke is totally normal and my girlfriend overreacted. First of all, it's not a funny joke because it's it just it demonstrates a lack of like women's anatomy. First of all, it makes you look ignorant. Um, and then you're talking about your girl, your girlfriend's friends, um, downstairs mix up, which is probably not good uh dinner conversation at the very least yeah he didn't even he didn't even try to make himself seem good it was just one bad decision after another vaj yeah her vajayj her china um and this is i i can't even as much as i want to muster up some kind of like plausible situation where Okay, he he made a bad joke and then his girlfriend wouldn't like let him get out of it. It was like I made a bad joke and then I doubled down and then I quadrupled down. This post is so bad, Rillip feels disrespected. Yeah, like, did you think before you posted this? Obviously not. You didn't think before you opened your mouth, that's for sure. It's a, a very normal joke to make. On this point, we disagreed. I asked her to drop it. Like, no, no, no. You don't... You, she doesn't have to drop it. She's the nurse here. Explaining a C-section. I'd just be like, yeah, they like cut open her like tummy and then pull the baby out. I'm sure there's a little bit more to it than that, but she's a nurse, so she knows this stuff. And then... I don't know, man. If they were both dudes... Nurses dropping things is bad. Yeah. Don't, um... Don't tell your nurse girlfriend to drop something. You're about to not have a girlfriend, actually, by the way. Crystal Queen 3000 says, You're the asshole for the completely unnecessary sexist comment about her friend's vagina and for your lack of understanding about basic biology. Bonus asshole points calling your girlfriend insecure, having a toddler tantrum, and storming off. 93 and a half thousand points. If, yeah, if they were both dudes and this was the 90s, it would you could explain a C-section. If he doesn't end up poisoned, I won't understand how. I think he's just going to end up not having a girlfriend. Yeah, this is... I mean, obviously, these are the top posts. Like, they're all going to be mostly pretty clear-cut. Am I the asshole for giving my daughter a better present than my son? Playing favorites once again? Scammed again! Our son is 22 and our daughter is 26. She bought a house in July. We know that moving into a new home always comes with unexpected costs right after you've probably depleted most of your funds. So for Christmas, we gave her $4,000. Our son, we gave a few different gifts totaling somewhere around $800. Okay. Our daughter had to work Christmas, but we did Christmas on the 26th and she stayed with us for the holidays from then until yesterday. Uh, this is 29 days old, so sometime a little bit after the new year. Our son still lives with us, and today he told us both he didn't want to say anything while his sister was there. But his feelings were hurt by the disparity and the value of the gifts. Mother, father, I just wanted to discuss the financial disparity between sister and I as gifts. We explained that the gifts we got 
him were tailored to his interests, but his sister had just passed a big life milestone where money is more important to her right now than sentiment. Uh, so pro tip for all the parents out there. Um, money is always more important than sentiment. Just, uh, just a little PSA there. He said it's still hurtful because it feels like we're more proud of her than him. Don't worry, we are. My wife got really frustrated when he said that and asked why he would choose the least charitable interpretation of our actions. He said that's just how he felt. He couldn't control it. I said we didn't give her money because we were proud, but because we had experienced being new homer being new homeowners and knowing that something always breaks in that first six months, and it's always expensive. He said that was all fine and good, but it still hurt to get a worse present and feel like an afterthought. My wife asked if he expected us to get him $4,000 worth of gifts. He said no, but he expected the gifts between him and his sister to be equal. My wife said, that's the same thing. My son said, it isn't. No, it is. He said we could have given her the monetary monetary equivalent of what we gave him. I told him that it's really, it isn't really fair for him to decide how, we, how much we spend on someone else's gift. Furthermore, cash is less personal than gifts, so giving her a cash equivalent to what he got her would be her getting the worst gift. No, why? What is this? How old are these people? Chat, cash is always the best gift. He said we weren't listening to him, just justifying. My wife said we didn't need to justify anything. And he was being entitled. At that point, he said he didn't want to talk unless everybody was everyone was civil and went to his room. He skipped lunch, breakfast for him today. And when he left for work, he didn't say goodbye, even though I was right by the door. My wife was irritated, and my son is clearly resenting us. I can't really decide if we were in the wrong here. On the one hand, we should be able to give our money to whoever we want. On the other, I never want to hurt my son's feelings. Were we wrong? Um, hmm. I feel like no, but the comments say yes. That's right. Cream. Cash rules everything around me. I, I'm so surprised that no one has said disrespected yet. It seems like we've gotten very close several times. What is my interpretation of this? Daughter just moved in, got a new house. She gets $4,000 cash. Son gets $800 worth of gifts, which is, again, that's more than I get for the most part. Although this Christmas I got uh, a pretty su substantial amount from my uh for my dad and his new wife and by new i mean they've been married for like 10 years i just haven't interacted with her so i would say hey listen son i realize that you feel like there is a disparity but when you eventually move out and you get a house we will also you know we'll also give you you know a pretty substantial cash amount i i don't know what is the what do the comments say like i can't even exp i i can't find a way that this could be like an asshole it says you're the asshole for doing this at christmas i'm the youngest of four siblings my oldest sister is 10 years older than me so we definitely reached milestones at different times Things like wedding money, housewarming gifts, graduation gifts obviously came at different times for each of us and were not tied to group holidays like Xmas. You could have given your daughter an $800 check or gift for Xmas and $3,200 for closing on the house at a different time slash setting. Then you could tell the son, we will be so excited to give you a gift of money to help out when you buy your first home. Instead, now it's a very disproportional Xmas gift, which is sure to raise some jealousy. Um... Also getting a lot of rent-free comments about the son. From Opie's comments, it seems like the daughter lived at home until the house purchase to save up money. And they have no issues with the son living at home now and want the same opportunity for him. Also, from Deleted, there was a clear invalidation of the son's feelings. He sounded like he was being really respectful. I... Okay, sure. And brought up valid points as to why he was feeling a certain way. Instead of being open about the whole situation, you started gaslighting. Whoa! Oh my gosh, gaslight gatekeep girl boss. Let's go. It's a good way to stop your kid from wanting to approach you about things in the future. Hex says, I don't expect any Christmas gifts. Do people really do big Christmas family events? I don't. This was a very unusual year for me. Because my 
dad's wife wanted to i guess like reach out to us kids like um my like my dad's kids which would be me and my sisters um so she like sent gifts to everybody it was really weird i haven't talked to her though i'm sure I'm sure she's wonderful i don't know i don't interact with my family very much at all come to think of it yeah really I, here's the thing these people are obviously like loaded because they can afford to have their kids live at home rent free and then also just give them like money and eight hundred dollars worth of gifts you better believe i wouldn't complain about eight hundred dollars worth of gifts that's like a that's like a ps5 or like three quarters of a new pc maybe a, a couple new monitors for my streaming setup a new desk. There's a lot of stuff I could do with that kind of money. Uh, I feel like like it's a very obviously it's kind of a binary like you're not the asshole or you're the asshole. But this seems like such a low level of assholery that it doesn't really deserve an asshole title. Philip says, Star, you don't even like slash talk to your dad. What chance did his wife have? I don't know. Probably not much. It's like a whole thing. Emmy can if Emmy Kins was here, she could tell you stories about her dad. Her dad is like a real piece of work. Holy cow. Um Am I the asshole for laughing at my niece's gift? Yes. How old's your niece? 12 years old. Okay, yep, you're an asshole. My 12-year-old niece is really into arts and crafts and recently got into crocheting. Neat. Before Christmas, she told me that she had a surprise gift for me and seemed really excited about it. I told her I was really looking forward to it as well and prepared her gift myself, which was actually art supplies. Okay, so he's getting her art supplies. On Christmas, when we had our family gathering, she brought me her gift and was super excited for me to open it. When I opened it, I say crocheted animal, but if I'm being honest, it looked really, really bad. To give you an idea of what it looked like, imagine something from bad taxidermy, but in crochet form. I couldn't help but bust out laughing, and I couldn't stop laughing no matter how hard I tried to suppress it. So I had to excuse myself to go to the washroom where I locked myself for nearly 10 minutes. Okay, it's not that funny. Dude, come on, settle down. When I came out, my niece was in tears with her parents trying to console her. Now I'm laughing. I apologized profusely. You don't have to put profusely in there. Why, why do people think I've noticed this a lot um, if they they think if they put I apologized profusely that it'll make them sound more apologetic all pro profusely just means you like apologized a lot you can just say I apologized and told her that I really liked her gift but she kept crying and shouted at me calling me a liar and that she sucked at art Ooh boy bad uncle my niece avoided me for the vast majority of the party after that. I tried to make her feel better by displaying her gift on my living room cabinet, but my wife pulled me aside later in the day and told me to take it down after the party because it was, in her words, really ugly and made her uncomfortable. Oh, man. Aunt and uncle of the year here, right over here. Surprisingly, all the adults was very understanding of my situation, but I feel really bad because I feel like I destroyed my niece's confidence. I'm not sure how I can make it up to her. What is bad taxidermy is a subreddit? I kind of want to look at that. Well, maybe we'll, we might add that to the list of subreddits we look at tonight. Oh, man. Way to like destroy someone's confidence. I just, maybe that's what happened to me. Like I, I did art at one point in the distant past that I don't even remember. And somebody laughed so hard. I swore to never do it again. You're an adult. You should be able to not laugh. Maybe. Laughing's not usually. You guys. Hold on. You guys try to make me laugh every freaking stream. Don't don't tell me I should be able to not laugh. It's not that easy. Um, We're not going to look at the update. Am I the asshole for not bringing a cake to a wedding I was uninvited from? What the heck? Short and sweet. All right, let's check this out. My ex-best friend got married this Saturday. I was supposed to be the maid of honor, but she removed me from the wedding over a dispute regarding my makeup, hair, and disinterest in the wedding. 
quote unquote disinterest in the wedding. She uninvited me from the wedding after I told friends my side of the story. I was responsible for the cake at the wedding, but canceled the order because I was uninvited and wanted to be reimbursed for all my investments in this wedding. Man, weddings really do make people crazy, huh? I told the bride I wasn't going to bring the cake over for them. The new maid of honor went to pick up the cake and learned that I had canceled the order. They were able to get another cake, but it apparently wasn't as nice. The bridegroom and my sister who attended told me it was unfair to cancel the cake. My sister thinks I should have let them enjoy their special day and then later discussed getting my money back. That, you're never getting that money back if you do that. The bride refers to the cake as a gift and claims that a gift cannot be returned. The groom just agrees with literally anything his precious wife says. It is a gift that cannot be undone. Speaking of Harry Stone, has anyone watched the new Night Court? I watched the Red Letter Media video of them watching it. It looks atrocious. It's, I mean, I don't even, I never saw the original Night Court, but I it had to have been funnier than whatever they're, they made now. The groom sounds bad at spotting red flags. You, you don't disinvite someone from a wedding ex and still expect the gift, not the asshole. I guess you could say the bride wanted to have her cake and eat it too. <laughs> oh, good stuff. All right, that's a boring one. But again, what, what is it with people in weddings? Speaking of weddings, hey, our final asshole one of the night is, am I the asshole for leaving my son's wedding after he denied his stepmom a mother-son dance? How old's the... How old's the... the okay, the son is 27. His stepmom, Natalie, came into his life when he was 16. His mom had passed away when he was 13. Jordan never really considered Natalie as his mom, uh, as is his right, by virtue of him having been 16. He refused to let her get close and shut down every attempt to have a close relationship. Yep. He moved in with his aunt months after Natalie and I got married. As years went by, they started reconciling and seeing each other more often. He invited us to his wedding, which took place days ago. How many days ago? Just days? I I think Vulcan Rider is very hard to do a reboot when so many of the people aren't returning. Like that 90s show I enjoyed because you have the bedrock of of Red and Kitty like still living in the same house. And now it's like a new batch of kids that are interesting and funny in their own ways and there's all the fun little 90s references uh, as a Lynn 90s kid myself I get some of them even not all of them some of them I, I was uh six in 1995 which is when the show takes place or at least this most recent season so I would not have got most of that stuff we got there and the atmosphere was great until later when I found out that Jordan had denied Natalie a mother-son dance and instead chose his aunt to dance with him. Natalie told me this minutes later and I couldn't help feel irritated and quite upset. I decided to get up and leave and we both left. I got calls from my family after they saw me leave and Jordan called later and I told him why I did it. He got mad and said it was his wedding, his wedding, his rules. And then his aunt is basically a mother to him and said that Natalie shouldn't expect special treatment. I said it's not special treatment, tre treatment, but a tradition. Besides, that he hurt her feelings for no reason other than for the sake of being malicious. Wow! Accused of being malicious, he got offended and accused me of ruining his day and causing a scene. Now the family sided with him, those assholes, and said I shouldn't have left no matter what. Um. Again, stepmom... Stepmom at 16 is tough because it's basically maybe a year before like they move out or whatever. They're not really a stepmom at that point. They're just dad's new wife, which is again, that's in my case. Although my, I think, I don't know when my parents got divorced and my dad got remarried. It was after I had moved out. So I didn't care. I wouldn't call my dad's new wife, my stepmom because I haven't even really met her. So why would I? You're the asshole. Your wife has never been 
Your wife has never been his mother, and he has every right to not have a mother-son dance with her. I strongly suspect this isn't the first time you've chosen your wife over your son, and it's probably why he moved in with his aunt. If you want any kind of relationship with your son going forward, I very much recommend both you and your wife apologize for throwing a tantrum at his wedding. Yep, that's exactly what I was going to say. Thank you, Reddit commenter. And that concludes... Chat. That concludes the Am I the Asshole portion of the night. We're now going to move on to We Want Plates. We Want Plates. We Want Plates. What are these? Oh. Actual plates shaped like shovels. Okay, they have kebabs. But why, though? Why can't you just have a normal plate? Also, what is this? I would say it's salsa, but this is... They have kebab, lamb chops. I can't read the... It's called... Oh, Indian. It's Indian food. Yeah, it, are Indian places known for shovel food? It's like something we do in the army. Like, cook food on a shovel over an open fire like a freaking caveman. It's not something I'd want at a restaurant. Tonight's special, an $8 avocado half with salt labeled as guacamole. Oh, what? $8? For like a, a mashed avocado half? That's still in the avocado skin and it still has the sticker on it? <laughs> Put some effort in. Must be a buffet. Yeah, it still has a sticker on it. Like, what the heck? Come on. With the sticker on it. That's a 4046 sticker, no less. I ate a lot of avocado, and that's the produce number for the cheapest avocados. They're charging $8 for half an avocado. You can buy a full one for less than a dollar. Wow. And people wonder why I don't go to restaurants. State of Maryland shaped cutting board that couldn't even lay flat on our table, which was a barrel. Wait, <laughs> it's the multiple levels. What the heck? So we're eating, uh, we're eating on a barrel with a plate shaped like the state of Maryland. I mean, the food looks pretty good. I like th there's like a big pretzel, and I guess these are little flatbreads with cheese and meat. I don't know about the blue cheese, man. I know it's safe. I know, but th just the idea of eating moldy cheese. Like, I've been taught from a... I think all of us, in America at least, we're taught, like, you see mold on the cheese, you get rid of that shit immediately. The It would be even funnier if this was not in Maryland. <laughs> we want tables. <laughs> Why is it a barrel? Are you eating in an amusement park? This is Maryland. We went on the rides and then we we bought a we bought a Maryland platter. You can just cut off the moldy part of regular cheese and eat it. Is that okay? I've heard that you can't do that because the mold is just like the part that you can see and the but the actual part of the mold that'll like kill you has infested every part of the cheese. So, I don't know. We don't have plates. We only have bowls. We are sorry for any incontin <laughs> incontinence. <laughs> oh, I wasn't expecting that. Sorry for the incontinence. Oh, man. Uh, that's that's good. What, what is this? This is like a Chinese buffet, I guess. Honey, walnut, shrimp, white rice, brown rice. Yeah, this looks like every grocery store Chinese platter I've been to. Inc incontinence is why they don't have plates. You're not completely wrong, but hard cheeses don't have the mold permeate through them. If it was bread or a soft cheese, you're right. What is a soft cheese? Like like a mushy cheese? Hold on, guys. We've seen this before. You guys remember this one? I showed it a couple of... Uh... $1,000. They got the Wagyu Tomahawk. 
Yeah. One thousand dollars. My oh mozzarella. Okay, mozzarella. So like a mushy cheese. Okay. Yep. Sure. I, that's not the same video we watched, but that is a. Uh, that's basically the same thing. Way to ruin the steak. Also, a thousand fucking dollars for a steak. That that better be a life changing steak then. All right, so many of these are videos. I guess we should look at some of the videos. Let's take a look here. Here's your pile of garbage. What? Is that ice cream? They just put it on the table, huh? You just put the ice cream on the table. That's... I mean, I guess if the table's clean... What the heck? Why, though? Just put it on a plate. <laughs> it's a pile of garbage. Yeah, here you go. Fuck you. Enjoy your ice cream. Sounds like a hundred percent like overpriced crap to sell to kids with rich parents as a status symbol. That's that does seem to be the case for those stupid steak things. Yeah, garbage plate is a local delicacy. That's that's one of one of the things when I lived up there, Rilla. Tables are just plate plates. Yeah, it's a plate for your plate. Yo, dog. I made a game partially inspired by We Want Plates. <laughs> but, oh no. The shovel. There's the shovel. A skate. Oh, a skateboard. Lego. <laughs> Enrolling the Lego. That's hipster cafe. Is that is that real? Hold on. I got I got to look this up. Hipster Cafe. Oh my god, it's $25 on Steam, but it has a free demo. Ever wanted to design, build, and manage a cafe on your very own home computer? Really? Okay then, welcome to Hipster Cafe. Make stupid food, serve it on a skateboard, and impress your friends by drawing it in your coffee. Oh man. This came out last April, apparently. Speaking of Steam chat... I talked to possibly an alien last night while we were playing Call of Cthulhu. And she's going to be back next Tuesday for a very, very fun, very special Weird Tuesday stream. So if you guys missed the last one where we looked at the awful celebrity tattoos, I can tell you right now, this one is game related. I'm not going to give any more hints. I'm just going to say it is game related. 12, $1,250 dinner featuring Guga Foods. Who is Guga Foods, chap? This was a $1,250 meal. The first course, they poured some chocolate on our hands. What? And made us lick it. Then the second course came in, and it was some macarons made with charcoal. Come on now. And my reaction was not what Wait, what? Expected. The next it's course, they call it the tree of life. It was a bread like tortilla made with yuca. They served Ooh. with a creamy garlic cilantro sauce. The main course was a brazino fish. They cooked it on a banana leaf on a shell of salt. What the heck? Small portions and served us. Yeah, you only get this much. What? You get what you get and you don't get upset. Next dish, I thought it was a joke. It's called lick me. Yeah, lick me. So no. You paid twelve hundred dollars for this? <laughs> Look like you enjoyed it, Lilia. Yeah, that was good. Very good. Uh, no, I don't care how good the food is. That's too much. Um. Okay, we saw the the wagyu tomahawk. Four plates would have done the job. I watch him when a video comes out. I can explain more on Friday. Okay, thank you. That is. Ugh. Why? Okay, what is this? Okay, this is... We're gonna get DMCA'd for that song. That's some Harry Styles right there. Okay, they got fries. They got... Um... Meat. They got... Crap. Oh, they got the chicken nuggets! Or... Possibly chicken nuggets. I mean, they put down, at least they put down paper first, right? Like they put, you got, oh, you got to wear gloves though. 
that is just give me a damn plate man now i so sometimes i feel like a bit of these posts on this sub are a little nitpicky like oh they put you know they put fries in a cup instead of a, a plate this they don't need they don't even put it on anything they just put it on a piece of paper on the table retire the sub is it is it that good have we reached peak we want plates eight sh oh no whoa hey guys have you ever wanted to eat your food out of a toilet now you can oh God. hey are, do we have any 14 year olds in the in the in the restaurant right now <laughs> what the fuck? Ah, oh, gross. <laughs> How clean is that toilet, though? <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely not. Everybody, um, there's a, everybody in chat is saying like, no way. I don't care what's in that thing, but especially whatever they were eating out of that. I don't want to touch that. Yeah, that, I'm making myself laugh tonight. No beans, though. It doesn't count. Found this on Tumblr. Baby, you haven't even touched your deconstructed Greek salad. Are you okay? Nope. No, I am not. It's a salad. Just put it in a, on a damn bowl. Like, what the heck? The cream sauce is already running off the sides. Can't wait for the gravy to go everywhere as well. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Imagine a caveman coming to the future and seeing that we eat food off of plates or or bowls and he's like, "Oh, that's a that's a great invest or invention. I'll have to when I go back 5,000 years ago or whatever, I will make sure that I teach my my tribes people how we do that. And then you take him to a restaurant and it just looks like this. And he's like, you know what? Never mind. The food looks great. First of all, the food looks awesome. I would eat that 100%. Why is it on a piece of wood? It's on. It's like a cutting board. It's just so fucking stupid. It's going to run onto your legs through the grate. We want plates and tables. Oh my God. We, we really do want plates. Guys, it may be possible to have too much plate. Yep. Is that like a single solitary walnut? What is that? Is that a nut? It's, it looks like a pecan stuck to some chewed bubble gum with a black curly hair stuck to it. Yeah, um, why though? What is that? It looks like the, the spoon is too big for that. And the plate was completely unnecessary. Better, better than the toilet. Basically anything that we see here tonight is going to be better than the toilet. So maybe another toilet carbonara in a cocktail shaker ends up on a plate but the presentation feels kind of whack pasta served in a bottle that is levitating on a chain what the heck that's kind of cool actually at least it contains the pasta is there even any pasta in that trough of cream <laughs> Uh, good. Oh, yeah, that's supposed to be pasta. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a surprising amount of sauce. Looks like a cockroach on a piece of sushi. <laughs> oh, this one? Because of the antenna, right? Yeah, it does. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Chain's cool, but it feels like a bad place to eat from. Yeah, it again, we already settled this like thousands of years ago when we invented the bowl and the plate. You don't have to do anything else. The board is the new plate. Wrong. If my I swear, if Emmy can serve me something on a piece of board, I would just refuse to eat it. 
I mean, I would still eat it because I would be hungry, but I would be like, um, are you okay? Is, is everything all right? The accursed cup bowl hybrid has made its way to China. The cup bowl combo. Wait, that's actually kind of cool. I mean, the it's going to heat up your drink and cool down your food. But at least it's like fits in one hand, which is kind of neat. So you can drink and then you eat your gyoza or whatever. I think this works as street food slash fair food. I could walk and munch slash sip. You could argue the food would warm up the drink, but those Zhao Long Bao would not survive. <laughs> I would eat those so fast. Um, yeah, no, this is this is fine for like street food. I'm not going to shit on this one. I'll shit on the toilet later. They gave me a mirror so I can look at my lonely ass self, Lamau. What the heck? Okay. I'm trying to... So this is like a little... Box of some kind with a mirror on it. And then they put the... They put a plate inside the box and they put the food on the plate. So at least there is a plate. But the box is completely unnecessary. I really hate this. Who wants to watch themselves eat? Yeah, good point. What if the hot sauce runs into the soda? In this one, I don't think it can. There's, You'd have to get the hot sauce up over in into the straw. And again, this is a street food, so you don't really care. You're, you're walking, you're sipping, you're eating. It's all good. I think it'll be all right. I don't know where to start. Well, you probably should because you posted this. It's a minute and a half long, huh? How did they put this? I, it probably snaps on. Unless they poured it down the straw. They, maybe they poured it down the straw. I don't know. And again, Mighty Sush, that, that you're going to drink that soda before it gets too hot. Like you're outside. It doesn't matter. Going to El Cielo off a gummy. I don't know what that means. Okay. Obviously, you two gay men did this. Straight men would only do that if you had them separately. Okay, I don't know what this ASMR narration is. Let's just take a look. What is this? Also, the nails. Man, rich people are crazy. I don't even want to look at this anymore. Just, we want chairs. <laughs> bicycle seats that's to get people out of there as fast as possible because you're uncomfortable man imagine you're at the bar and instead of the a traditional bar stool they just have a, a bicycle seat how uncomfortable would you be off a gummy oh edible marijuana okay I see I was wondering what that the heck they meant by that friend is in new york and sent this oh man that's hilarious though actually i kind of like this one because look it's got you put all the, the waffle fries in there they got six different kinds of dipping sauce i won't complain about this at least it contains the food I'd rather eat out of a sink than a toilet. Yeah, you're right, Rillip. This is good. This is good stuff. That's not a... What does the comment say? I would eat that. There are not nearly enough fries in there to justify such jackassery. Maybe they're halfway through the fries. Maybe it was full to the brim before. You don't know. We also want menus. What the heck? Gork and Cleaver. Gork... Cleaver is the name of the restaurant. Um, and they printed the menu on a cleaver for some reason. That's I mean that's kind of cool. I assume it's not sharp. It looks like they uh blunted it quite a bit. Does the faucet pour sauce? Sadly, I don't think the faucet pours sauce. I was gonna say, like, what if it dispensed ketchup, but I think they have all the sauces covered on the side. Everything but the 
kitchen sink. That's right. Real expensive if you have to ever have to change the menu. Maybe that's why they made their prices so high, so they'd never have to change it. Like, yeah, we, we're like, we're covered for the next 20 years, even if inflation is crazy. All right. So that is, we want plates, chat. We got one more subreddit to look at tonight. We're going to take a look at McMansion Hell. This was requested a couple of months ago. I don't remember who exactly it was. Feel free if you're in chat to uh, identify yourself. But we've it's been a while since we looked at this, so we're going to take a look at it now. When you forget to include the fridge in the new floor plan. Ah, yes. Of course. How foolish of me. Wait, what the heck? <laughs> so they built the kitchen. And there's no room for the fridge. So they had to build like this insane like separate fixture for just the fridge they they put it in a cubby why i've seen i've seen a lot of terrible things in this sub this one might take the cake though holy shit that's bad it's so bad it's not it's like at an angle too why is it at an angle you could have put it right here oh man Oak, wait, hold on. This is, pa I want the past year. This may be the worst I've ever seen. Certified McMansion TM. Oh no, I think we looked at this one. It's like a, it's a corrugated steel castle. Complete with turreted tower. And a net up here for some reason. I don't, I don't know what's going on up there. In case anyone wants to check out the fake grass on the air traffic control tower. There's a public listing. Oh no, this is real. Oh, it's real chat. It's all... What? <laughs> a little hatch to get up here. That's what the net was for. It's like a... It looks like a kid's ball pit. It looks like something. So you, you climb up into the hatch and then you get to the uh, the special AstroTurf room. There is so much here. Oh, I wish... I wish I had saved this for like a... Looking at stupid houses with Alien or something. But this is... Maybe we will. We'll, we'll, we'll save it up for that too. But I want to look at it a little bit. Okay, it looks, it looks awful. I'm going to save that. For uh, maybe to, to surprise Alien with. It's for the zombie apocalypse. It But there's so many windows. It wouldn't even hold up. Unless these have like metal shutters that come down across them. You think a horde of zombies couldn't push their way through this cheap garage door? Or go up these stairs? Like this is a terrible defensive construction thing. My first attempt at this. That's a terrible title. Oh, this is like a whole album. Hourly Motel Vibes. One of the Zillow tags is Fancy Ceilings. So fancy, chat. Bench Swing Room. Oh, what? Fancy. Because fuck this door. <laughs> it just block it off. Oh, man. Fancy! I'm the most 99 kitchen that ever was. Was that a big thing in the 90s? Was like all wood kitchens? Fuck. What? They put the fridge in front of a door? That's... Is that even legal? That's like a fire hazard. Also, having the... I guess this would be a kitchen table, not a dining room table if it's in the kitchen, right? Fancy. Ooh, so fancy. Bedroom one with the, the Peloton. And, like, nothing else. It's a bed, a lamp, and a Peloton. These people don't seem to understand doors. This one's a little bit better looking. Um, bedroom three. Why am I way up here? It's fancy. Fancy wall. <laughs> three porn computers. <laughs> this is what I need for my streaming setup. You got porn on one, the stream on the other, or the, the, the main game on one, and then the you can want monitor the stream on the other one. It all works out. 
It's the human trafficking room. Uh, at least they didn't block the door. Yeah, what's up with the like, cr just like bare mattresses just laying on the floor? We also hate grass. It, this looks like it's in Texas or something, so that makes sense. All right, good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you, Caddy77040. Just wait for it. All right, I'm waiting. The roof lines, though. Why do these always end up looking like something I would make in The Sims? Oh, no. Giraffes. Gorge picture window to allow all the brickwork to shine through and more giraffes. Oh, go gorgeous. Shakespeare in horror. This is where you uh, you do your little balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet. Which I can never remember. It's like, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east and Juliet is the sun, etc, etc. This is a bathroom? What the heck? This is like a, a dang like auditorium. Is the piano on wheels? Let me see. Um, I can't tell. I don't think so. I think it's little, little feeties. Next Tuesday, Shard and Emmy do Romeo and Juliet. As fun as that would be, we already have a plan, but we'll see. Because Emmy can well be along for the ride. I don't know how involved she's gonna be. Is this? This isn't carpet in the. The room with the bathtub, is it? What on earth is going on here? And it's got the the angled ceiling because of the roof? Oh, they got the <laughs> It's a full-scale replica of the Oval Office? Oh, man. That's great. And also a little bit insane. Oh boy. Very, very patriotic. These are awesome. I'm, I like, as much as I'd like to look at these more often, I feel like there's only so many. It's probably better to save them. Somebody watched too much West Wing. What is this roof? It's like, okay, so it looks like there was a house. And then they were like, we want more house, but we don't want more roof. So then they just, it's like somebody like stretched the roof down <laughs> over whatever. Why is there plywood now? What, what is, what? That's not how this was supposed to work. Why is the tub, why is the faucet for the tub off to the side? This is what happens when you use tweak scale on a house. Yeah, they just, they were like, I want more, but all, what the heck? This is just, it's just wood. Is this must be the like crazy roof. That's, that's like a DIY situation. Holy cow. What possible reason? I just don't understand. I have so many questions. I have so many. <laughs> I was not expecting that. What the? Heck? Yeah, why? What? We want more house. But it. we only have. I, I don't even know. This is. We have a garage and we want to attach it to the house, but we want to do it in steps. <laughs> this is just, I heard you like roofs. We got, we got a dozen of them just for you going every which way. Yeah, this. Oh man. So how did nobody say anything? Like, Hey, maybe we could do like a diagonal roof. They were just like, eh, right angles only. Sorry. They were they were ready to pay extra to make the whole neighborhood laugh. 
Yeah, so just drive past the house with the six roofs and uh, you're almost there. <laughs> so stupid. I mean, I, I would live in that house, but I'd feel bad about it every day. But I already feel bad about the house I live in now, so it's not like... Texans arriving on Mars. Okay, I see. It's like a funny... Funny haha -ha gif. All right. Loganville, Georgia. Okay. Initially listed by builder for $2.6 million, foreclosed and sold for $374,900. <laughs> I'm surprised anybody bought this at all. Looks like something you'd see at Disneyland. The builder designed this himself. No architect was used. He built an entire subdivision of these crazy monster homes. Most of all, most all of them foreclosed and sold for dirt cheap. Man, I wish I could buy a terrible house for dirt cheap. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, you'd have to live in Georgia, I guess, I guess, to get this, but uh, probably worth it at the time. Malibu meets Nebraska. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, we have a house on the lake. The lake. Help. Empty nesters, raise your hands. What? I mean, you don't have to add your fucking editorial. You can just let people look. Okay, well, there's like a black thing. I gotta look at the whole image? Man, why are they make people making terrible Reddit galleries? TV2 missing. Oh, that's right. There is TV2 high, but that's kind of a gimmick sub. It's, isn't it basically illegal for a significant construction without an architect involved? Not in Georgia. They just let you do whatever. <laughs> the panopticon window. <laughs> why is this here? <laughs> it's a two-way mirror. They can see you into the living room. This is a step. Yeah, that's probably safe door to fear all right all right this is obnoxious to look at with this uh, the way the gallery is set up i became a homeowner this week figured i'd post on thursday are is this your house this is i'm sorry sir this is mcmansion hell this looks fine mighty stoosh wants some uptime that's right. Two hours and seven minutes. And we will be uh, we'll be wrapping up here soon because uh, this was the last subreddit I had. This is Catherine Hepburn's 1930s residence. Los Angeles, California, built in 1927. Um, so far, so good. Uh, this looks. Where is the hell? This looks fine. This is like a normal people house. It, did we change subreddits all of a sudden? Oh. Thursday design appreciation. Okay, don't click on those. If you click on these, you're going to get good houses. I see. There's, It's like a thing they do. All right. Finally found one. 5.7 million in New Jersey. It's so bad. Okay. All right. We're starting off strong with the uh, the basketball court. And the, like, the firehouse-style garages. Three island. Oh, three kitchen islands? Hmm. Even the La Quinta has their balconies the same height. Oh, because of... Oh. I see. Echo, echo, echo. The shrine. <laughs> oh, yeah, what, what is this? Good question. It looks like you would go up there and then there's like a walkway, but I don't think you're supposed to go up there. That's probably not a load bearing section. Lol. What are we lolling at? I mean, the absurdly large bedroom. Yeah, kitchen archipelago. <laughs> it's exactly. So, You've got so many islands. None of this matches the rest of the house style. I mean, whatever. Whoa, untreated wood. 
What the heck? Why? In the shower too? Won't that rot? Is this the bottom of the stairs? I don't know. You're, you're the one. You posted this. Don't ask me questions. First time posting here. I saw this monstrosity for sale and wanted to nitpick. All right. Well, why don't you pick some nits? Nope. Guys, stop. I mean, this looks terrible, but you covered it all up with your stupid text boxes. Also, pro tip, uh, put your descriptions closer to the image or the white. Whoa, of, ooh, Avengers bed. The decor is just their full legal name censored for privacy. I kind of like the Avengers bedspread. I would do that. Um, no, bar, no bar stools, no bitches. Okay, this, I'm, I don't want to look, ah, crap. Hold on, chat, I closed it. I'll fix it. Uh, I don't want to pull an Atrioc, so I'm being extra careful here. Oh boy, okay, I, I screwed this up, chat. Oh, I screwed this up bad. I don't know how to get back to this, the subreddit. There we go. Control shift T, yeah, I, okay, well now I know that. It's fine, I fixed it, we're good, we're back. Okay, and then give me the top for the year. There we go, we're good. Is the house pregante? I don't know, is it? Let's find out. I, oh no, I ruined my distuchious night. I'm sorry. What? Why is it? Why is it bulging? What is going on here? Is it pregnant? Is it pregnant? The house is pregnant. This is such a stupid house. I mean, it's kind of cool looking, but like, why though? It's. it's Someone who the person who lives here has an inflation kink? Maybe. That's the only thing I can think of. Someone shot a bag of popcorn with a laser. <laughs> Whoop. Why? Wh why not? It looks like the rainforest cafe. Is that it's like a water slide? Okay, no, if you're complaining about this, you're wrong. This looks awesome. I would love to live in a house like this. It's probably a huge pain in the ass to clean, but if you can afford this, you're not cleaning it, so it's not your problem. Dude, are people... What do the comments say? This looks amazing. Oh no, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, like Rainforest Cafe. That looks... Yeah, no. I love it. Nope. Not, not trash. Not garbage. Looks amazing. 100% would live there. Sometimes people just have a sense of humor and too much money. So you build a pregnant house? For my job, I spent I spend most of my time in these fake, nice, cheap plywood house neighborhoods. They're all the same. The right garage door most likely has the husband's F-250 and the wife's Jeep and the smaller garage door always has a super nice old muscle car. That's just how they've been programmed. Oh, okay. I mean, now you're just hating on rich people, which, you know what? I'm always for. Let's go. Look on my works and despair. This is, uh... I don't know what... Th this must be a painting from something, but this is clearly just an awful McMansion. Gross. A lovely... No, these are Thursday ones. I shake my head every time I pass this bad boy. Speaking of bad boys, uh, Cat has come to visit. You guys can't see him. Because, uh... One, he's too small, and two, I don't have the camera on right now. But just take my word, he's here. I wonder if art bots can make McMansions. Oh, no. Should we try it? Hold on, I, I have access to, uh... I do have access to something. 
Let's try it. I gotta log in. Who just let me in? Okay, it let me in. We're in. Okay. Uh, Image generation. Let's go. Generate an image for me, Mr. AI person. How do I... I just... I just want to do it. Can you just make it, please? Chat, sometimes I wonder if I am just old and don't know how to use the internet anymore. Okay, we're gonna try this. What in tarnation? Yeah, it's um... The facade, yeah, the facade is probably fake stone and then they just have regular siding on the side. I think, did I tell you guys about that building that I walk past every day that has um fake brick siding? Like you can see where they applied it. There's like um lines and if you go up to it it's just vi it's like a basic vinyl siding but it's shaped to look like bricks it's so stupid chat the ai generated the mcmansion i i gotta show this hold on check this out check it out the ai knows we will have an infinite amount of McMansions available for the rest of time. These actually don't look too bad. This one's a little funky. This has like a lot. This has a lot going on. This one's kind of cool though. This almost looks like a real house. Although this side is curved and this side is flat, which is kind of silly. Um, yeah, this one for sure is definitely... The, the garage is just grass. <laughs> There's no driveway. Oh, that's good. It definitely managed to figure something out. That's pretty impressive. All right, well, let's uh, let's get back to the, the real McMansions, not the AI generated. We only want the real stuff. Oh, no, it's one of these. Hi, I want four garages, each more garagier than the next. Doesn't having the roofs like go into each other like this defeat the purpose of having a slanted roof? Draw a McMansion clad in corrugated cardboard. A huge uh, a McMansion clad in corrugated cardboard. We'll try that. This one looks like the AI did it. It's like, yeah, they have what? They have garages, right? How many garages? I don't know, like four? I can't tell if they're actually getting shorter or if it's just perspective and they're getting farther away. This might be a dry place. Uh, I guess. Yeah, if it snowed, like the snow would all pile up in the middle, like the little valleys here, which would uh, not be good probably for your roof. Someone went hog wild with their Hurricane Sandy insurance payout. This one has a bunch of writing on it. <laughs> McTumor. <laughs> the McTurret. Holy roof lines, Batman. Do okay. Do people not get houses designed before they build them? Or are they just like, yeah, I want like, uh, make it look like this. Oh, the garage you have to turn to the right to get into? What the heck? The roof line should definitely not di dip into each other like that if avoidable. It was definitely avoidable. They just chose to... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a cardboard McMansion. They're still working on this one. They're in the middle of renovating. That's so good. 
Great suggestion, by the way. Rillip, that was a Rillip suggestion. This is like the, the house that I would imagine when I was a kid and we got big cardboard boxes for whatever reason. And we would try to stack them on top of each other and uh, and like pretend like we were living in a house, but it had two stories and you'd like you could try to climb up onto the second story, but then the boxes would all collapse and it was a, it was a whole thing. Maybe I'm the only one who did that. X says, I'm guessing some architect skipped the how to tell a client no. Or maybe they're just a bad architect. And they're like, yeah, definitely need, we need all these turrets. Because that's cool, right? Let's go to the next page real quick. We're almost done, chat. Russian Mafia Palaces. Just outside Moscow. Uh, sure. I, I like the gazebo. Nothing says Mafia like a Polly Pocket Mansion. Can anyone really be that bad at their profession? Yes. Yes, they can. Recently listed this one for $1.6 million. Human centipede inspired roof. Slab City. Vampires will love this win windowless garage. <laughs> Okay, see this shadow, or maybe they ran out of diarrhea for this section of the floor. Oh yeah, what is this made out of? The brown room. <laughs> the eating stage. Yeah, why? You don't want to go upstairs. <sighs> if you're in a room, you don't want to go upstairs to get to another portion of the room. That's one of the reasons I hate split levels. Oh boy. No windows, please. Yeah, please, please don't put any windows in my house. Thank you. All right, chat. I think that's enough um, nonsense for tonight. We got, we got some good laughs, especially out of the one about the 14 year old who can't wipe his ass. I am, I, I, I don't know. That was so funny. I'm, I'm going to be riding high off of that for a while, but Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Thanks for sticking around through this nonsense. I'll be back uh, Friday, of course, for more gaming. And next Tuesday, very special, or I guess Monday will be more gaming. But next Tuesday, don't forget, very special uh, Weird Tuesday stream with possibly an alien and Emmykins will be there also. We're going to be looking at some games. And I will see you guys then. So have a great night.